much about Annabeth's like character you could say about that that I think like me being me I think it's funny that she is like so outrageously logical to the point of being cold that she thinks that she wants to put herself through seeing what the sirens would show her on purpose because she is so sure that she can handle it. Mm -hmm. um, and then that obviously blows up spectacularly in her face. And it was just one of those things of like, it reminds me of just uh, people that I've met before that it's that whole, like her whole fatal flaw thing mm -hmm. of feeling like, well, I'm smart and thinking that she knows more than other people. And so it's like, yeah, if I could have a chance to find out what I would see from the sirens, I'm going to take it because obviously I'll handle it fine. Yeah. And... No, no. Yeah. That, I would say anybody who's taken a class where they've read the Odyssey has maybe thought about this, maybe thought about like, oh, would I want to listen to the sirens? Would I take the chance? And so that kind of gave Rick an opening of like, what does a siren song sound like? Like, what, what, how do they do it? And we see them shape shifting to the people. We see them projecting images. And um, for Annabeth, we find out that her greatest desire is to fix everything, essentially. It's to get her parents back together, to rebuild the world in her image because she wants to be an architect, and to somehow save Luke. Like, Luke being there can be seen as a romantic thing because I know that's the back and forth that we kind of get is, is she romantically interested in Luke or is she just brotherly interested in him? Mm -hmm. And I happen to think this is an instance where it looks romantic, but it's not. This is her thinking, I just want him back. Like, I want to fix this situation and maybe I could do it in a way that the Olympians weren't able to. And all of our friends that know about this were not able to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that was romantic either. Like, I'm kind of a bad person to ask about that because I never think anything's romantic. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Asexuality is like that. And uh, you kind of have to hit me over the head with it. Like, I'm literally that person that didn't realize that they were foreshadowing Percy and Annabeth until Aphrodite literally tells Percy in the third book I'm rooting for you guys. And he's like, for what? <laughs> like, he doesn't, he, he's he doesn't a, even know. Yeah. He's, he's still a teen. He's still like 13 in that book. So he doesn't know what the heck she's talking about. But I was like, oh, God. Okay. I guess that's what they're doing with that. But until that happened, I didn't even think about that at all. Um, <laughs> but I also don't think that it's that. I think that if she knew that Thalia was going to come back or could be saved, she would also see Thalia there mm -hmm. as like her like found family basically and the whole idea that she can the belief that she can somehow if she just talked to those people or something that she could somehow fix everything yeah um, exactly like i that's what i was thinking too is that if she knew that she could be saved she would have been in the vision but mm -hmm. annabeth probably thinks it's impossible yeah yeah she thinks that thalia is dead like before it happens, there's no way that any of them, I don't even think Chiron or anything, thought that like yeah. hearing her tree would mean that she would physically be alive again. There's no way that they would have ever thought that that was possible until it actually happens. But um, there's a lot with like the siren stuff that is like a, like a lot of like emotional stuff. But mm -hmm. the one thing with Annabeth I wanted to talk about before talking about Percy seeing all that stuff and all all the stuff that he does to try to like save her from dying um, during that whole thing um, is when they get back on the ship and she's talking to him about what she saw when he tells her that he saw it too mm -hmm. and he and she's saying like ha don't you ever think that like that you could do things better than the gods or you could do things better than everyone else and she literally says that she understands why Luke thinks that you can just start over and want to just start over with everything. Like, mm -hmm. and it's one of those things I think is like weirdly fascinating is that a lot of people, when they discuss Percy Jackson's stuff, they talk about like, oh, Percy would have joined Luke and no, he wouldn't. But they talk about 
him joining him because he when he shows that he's angry at the gods when he's older um nobody talks about this nobody talks about the fact that when annabeth was 13 she is saying yeah i can understand why luke wants to just completely overrun society and start it over from nothing yeah and i'm like do you like the thing that that makes me think about especially is in the third book when she is kidnapped she is there's a bunch of scenes of her where she is there with luke because he's the one he's at least part of the people that are torturing her for a while and so she would have scenes with him by herself and it makes me genuinely wonder what kind of stuff he said to her because in the fourth book she's much more aggressive with percy about wanting to believe that that luke could be saved and i'm like i know he played some like horrible mental stuff with her during that book and it and they're going to show it to us in the show like they have to um mm -hmm. and it makes me wonder what he says because she is someone who's already like acknowledging like yeah i could understand him wanting to do that and i'm kind of tempted to want to do that too and percy is like no I would, and she's like, wouldn't you ever want to be in charge? He's like, absolutely the fuck not. <laughs> yep. Like, I would never want that. Like, if we saw Percy's siren thing, it would probably be him being a normal person. Yeah. Like, no, no responsibilities, no nothing, just his closest friends and his mom just hanging out and being people, going to school, living their lives without any pressure or responsibilities. Or He doesn't want to be in charge which is why like he's the best person to be in that position like that's why he is the prophecy kid because he's the one that doesn't want it but he he takes it to help everybody else but he doesn't actually want it himself like that's not what he wants but that's what she wants and i'm like i think it's so fascinating that nobody talks about that annabeth when she was 13 was literally says that she's 10 she can under she like tempted by the idea of what luke is like pretending like what he wants to do yeah and i'm like that is like that's scary to think about <laughs> like uh but that it makes sense for her um for her fatal flaw that's like the thing about that sort of fatal flaw that is so dangerous is that if you believe that you know better than everybody it can make you especially if you have it in the way where she does where you can be so logical that you are almost like surprised by people's emotions sometimes like mm -hmm. the bad way of that is you can sometimes make like decisions that hurt a lot of people because you think that, well, I'm just doing things better and you're just upset because you don't understand what I'm trying to do. Yeah. That sort of a thing. Like the, I feel like that is basically the argument people do about like, oh, Killmonger was right. Like he wasn't right either. Please, for the love of God, stop saying these things. But, but like, that's where I think a lot of the, those sort of, like those sort of ideas come from is the idea of like, oh, if I can just do everything better, it will automatically be better because I'm doing it. And that mm -hmm. means that like you don't notice when you're doing things that are just as bad and harmful as other people because you think that it's fine when it's you doing it. That's like, that's a lot of what Luke does. Yeah. <laughs> he acts like a god in like, in these stories, like he kill he's killing demigods and thinks that it's fine. He wants to destroy everyone and he thinks that it's okay because he's the one doing it yeah and and like somehow him doing all this stuff that the gods also do is somehow fine when he's doing it but not when the gods do it it's that whole he doesn't even see it realize it that way um but yeah i was like wow uh i can see why now why annabeth has a hard time like really seeing him for who he is besides like their personal connection because they probably have that in common when they were at camp of that sort of idea because they both have it in like different ways. If not, hers was maybe even inspired by him because he's the closest mm -hmm. thing to family she's ever had. She met him when she was seven and he was at camp for the first, you know, five years, five years after. Yeah, because like technically six years because he didn't leave until, you know, the end of the summer of when they were 12 but still that's that's six years that he was there and he definitely kind of shaped how she saw the world that they were in um yeah. for better or for worse and i'm sure that he would he would be fine with her thinking that kind of stuff um because he thinks that way too
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, And you see nothing wrong with putting those thoughts into her head. No. And then the Percy side of it, I was just like, dear Lord. Um, The thing that I thought of that made me sad (laughs) about that part is um, that when Percy sees her um, see Luke in that like vision, Mm -hmm. Um, It reminds me of that thing that happens with a lot of abuse victims where you know, like, you know that that person is bad, right? But you almost like don't want to tell other people because you know that you are going to ruin how they how they see that person. That's honestly the worst. It's the worst thing ever to tell to know that you have to go and meet up with someone and then tell them something that like forever changes how they see this person that they love and also how they see you i did it so many times i did it like i think six or seven times and every time i felt like i was gonna die because it was horrible and i just by this point i'm like i don't even want like you know with my whole thing with my uncle dying like i never told him what happened because by that point i was like i'm so tired of doing this i don't want to do this again yeah Um, but it was it was that feeling of and it's also a thing for me when i saw that i was like that's it's interesting because people talk about the siren scene with like foreshadowing like percy and annabeth like romance stuff but i was like this is just really sad to me like it doesn't feel like it's foreshadowing like anything romantic like yeah it's him being there for her when she's crying and losing it at the end when she finally like wakes up from the spell and everything which is always nice to like see them comforting each other like that like this felt to me more like sad that he was seeing that realizing like i can never talk to her about this Mm -hmm. because if i do talk to her about this i'm ruining this like hope that she has for the future and that's really that's just like a really hard position to be in and i've been in that position before and so i know how hard it is like that's what percy is feeling in that moment of like she is imagining saving the person that I know is never going to come back and is the personification of evil. And yeah. it's like the person that I am scared of the most. And so that means that whatever happens with him going forward, I can't really talk to her about it. And because how are we going to talk about it? I don't want to be the one to, I don't want to be the one to ruin this like hope she has for the future being destroyed. Yeah. And so it's like, I'm just going to have to like keep, that those things with Luke to myself because I can't talk about it with her and yeah that's how that goes in like future books he can't talk about it with her and it's the main reason why like people talk about in the future books like Rachel being why they don't get together or whatever but that's why that's the main reason why they don't like them being afraid that Percy's gonna die but also most of it is because Luke is always standing in the middle of them and it just shows how manipulative he is Mm -hmm. that he's not even he's not even there he's not even physically there anymore and he is still the idea of who Luke was to Annabeth when she was seven Mm -hmm. is more important is more important to her to protect who she thought he was as a kid than this relationship that she has with Percy in the present right now yeah and it's just it's it's hard it's just hard to see that because it's just really hard you understand where both of them are coming from and why both of them feel the way that they do and it's things that they shouldn't have to deal with that luke is forcing them to go through um but it is just a really difficult situation and they honestly both do the best that they can with it 